Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Kroll, author, and uh, this is my Angel's video blog. Um, basically, just kind of uh, figuring out this format on this. Um, haven't come up with a name for it yet, and I probably will soon. I'm just kind of, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm, I'm done trying to plan and brainstorm, whatever. It's, it's the internet, who cares? I have full creative control over this. There's no studio involved, so here, here you go. Let's, let's feel it out. So, um, I mean, basically what I'm seeing right now out of the team is um, um, I'm seeing more youth and I like that. Um, it's it, one thing that I've noticed is it, it, it's kind of more Angels baseball youth uh, from the past. Um, a lot of uh, speed and uh, uh, on the bases, you know, uh, action baseball guys that can swing the bat. Um, but I would like to see a little bit more of that Dodgers like patience at the plate. You know, the, the hitters that go up there and work counts and wake you up. But it would be good to have a mix of that speed in there because that's that's dangerous. That can be really dangerous as an offense against uh, other teams. Um, I'm loving the, the young starting pitching. We haven't seen this in a long time. Of course, we did. You know, when Garrett Richards, Andrew Haney, Tyler Skaggs, uh, Matt Shoemaker was basically the four, and CJ Wilson even, um, you know, that was their. That was a five-man rotation right there that could have just taken the Angels uh, on the road to the playoffs for, you know, a few, you know, a, a number of years. But Tommy John surgery took um, three of those guys and then weird injuries to Matt Shoemaker. Um, and, of course, even, even C.J. Wilson started to get injured through the end of his contract. And, um, I mean... That, that's a big reason the Angels struggled so much. I mean, you can talk all day long about failed free agents or, um, you know, lack of farm system. The Angels, they had a young rotation that could be solid for, a, you know, a good five years or so, you know, just like the Indians had, just like the Cardinals had for in you know, the Braves, you know, year after year. They would have these young rotations of guys that can just give you a good amount of innings, not not Cy Young guys, but just well, maybe the Indians, of course, Corey Kluber and um, and Trevor Bauer at the in, at the early stages of the career, you know. But that was about it for the most part. Um, so, you know, I mean, that you could trace it back to that, um, among many other things. But it's nice to see that again. It's nice to see Patrick Sandoval coming into his own. I mean, he, you got to admit, he was an Astros farmhand. So when when I saw that trade uh, for Martin Maldonado, I was like, okay, yeah. You know, this guy might actually end up – he's just the fact that he's coming from the Astros right now because they're coming out with guys that you never knew existed um, for, you know, five years ago. You know, the, you know, Framber Valdez, uh, Leroy Garcia, um, and, and, you know, Patrick Sandoval could be that same type of guy. Reed Detmers. I don't know if he... It, it's hard to make up a, a guy who, who's a, who, who's around 15th pick. It's a little harder sometimes to gauge it. someone like him if they're a frontline material. But then again, Patrick Sandoval himself at times has looked frontline material but then at other times has not, you know. Um, so, I mean, it, it's just coming along really well. And then, of course, you have Shohei, you know, and I think the Angels will extend him. If they trade him, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hit a bottle of whiskey and drown in my sorrows because, honestly, what he's done for us, I couldn't – I don't think we could ask for more – for, I mean – it's almost as if he's caught up to Trout's entire career. I mean, that's that's probably an exaggeration. Probably is. Um, in terms of just, like, what he's done and all of his accomplishments and the impact, I mean, Trout has been the best player in the game for, you know, most of his career. And I don't know if you can call him that anymore. Maybe he is if he can just stay healthy and not, you know, miss, you know, 30, 40 games a year or even more than that. Um, but I I would actually have been madder about trading Trout early in his career than trading Otani. Because I feel like 
we're gonna what we got out of the Tani is pretty much what we're gonna get. And it could it could be a plateau. We could get this out of him for the next seven years. Who knows? You know, or this is the peak and we could see a gradual decline. You know. But I that's just that's the big difference between him and Trout when it comes to the prospect of trading him. I would have been more pissed trading Trout than Otani just because of the massive impact we've already seen. And it's like, okay, we've seen that. So let's see what we can get for the future if they trade it. You know, if they don't, fine, great. I hope the new ownership goes the, to the direction that the Mets went, you know, same direction the Dodgers have been in and at times the Red Sox and the, and the Astros are heading in that direction. You know, come on. Go over the luxury tax, you know, do it. And, you know, this farm system still isn't strong enough to where you can just tap into your depth and not go that far up with payroll, you know. And I think, you know, I hope that that's what the new order does because I think it would make sense because it's time, you know. You have a good young rotation developing. Um, you have all these action players coming through uh, via trade and up through the farm system. Um, there, I mean, there, there's even something that tells me that Lavon Soto might, you know, be an impactful player. I don't know, but I mean, there's just a part of me that does. I just don't know why. I can't point my finger on it. So don't ask me. Well, you know, because I know some fans will be like, "Huh?" Well, I don't know. It's just a gut feeling. You know what I mean? Just like Luis Rangifo, I had a gut feeling about him. Um, I was not real. I wasn't really mad when, when Artie pulled the plug on that trade for Jock Peterson because I, at the time I was like, Jock Peterson's not getting us to the World Series. Jock Peterson probably, you know, he he has improved much since he was with the Dodgers with the Braves. But again, this 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 is like over t three, three seasons have gone by pretty much since that trade was nixed. So who cares anymore? Ross Stripling was never going to take us to the World Series. Luis Rangifo just needed more. We needed more patience with him because he was obviously never a, one, a top 100 prospect. Most of those prospects don't end up successful major leaguers anyway. And now he's showing the pop and he's showing uh, his ability to hit. His patience at the plate has been like this, you know, um, up and down. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And so then add David Fletcher to that. So what if you had, what if David Fletcher, Luis Rangifo, and LeVon Soto ended up being the Howie Kendrick, Eric Ibar, Sean Figgins? You know, probably, I don't know if, if it's the same level, but it's, it's at least, you know, something that you can have that, that solidifies, you know, the, the infield depth. And, um, so, I mean, I, I think I think even the bullpen, you know, there's some young arms in there that look like they could be pretty successful. Um, and, and, and it's weird how how Rizal Iglesias uh, became the closer that, and everybody was happy about that, and then all of a sudden he tanks. And then, and then trading him suddenly improves the bullpen by a lot. You know, they're not blowing games like they were in, you know, in late May and through June. Um, of course, they need offense, you know. But I mean, we're seeing we're seeing some good youth, and I think that um, I think that's going to be the key. Especially if you do raise that payroll up there, I think that's going to be the key uh, is, is still having that depth. Because the less depth you have, and, and and if you're willing to spend that much money, the less depth you, depth that you have, the more you probably need to raise that payroll to add depth off the open market. So that's the state of the, of the organization that I'm seeing right now. Um, next time, um, I think I'll probably get into something more specific, maybe even talk about a team um, or, or, or a player profile or something. Still trying to feel it out. So um, thank you for watching, and uh, maybe I'll even have a name next time for the video blog. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.